of Chile says that it is going to nationalize its lithium reserves. Now, what does this mean for lithium projects that are already ongoing as well as future lithium projects? Let's bring in Andrew Bell. We hear that scary word nationalization. Yeah. You wonder about companies that are already there. What's going to happen? Yeah. So. Uh, Reuters and Scotia are today calling it nationalization. I, I've yet to drill into exactly what they're proposing. but it, I think Congress needs to approve it. That's right, it's only proposed, that's yeah. right. The, the plan here seems to be that all future uh, lithium projects will be public-private partnerships, but there's not going to be seizure of existing lithium mining assets in the country. I think that's important to underline yeah. because the reaction we're seeing in these stocks, particularly Albemarle and, S and SQM, yes. that already operate there, seems like they're nervous, but they have very long-term existing contracts. Exactly, uh, right through to 2043. Uh, in the case of Albemarle, and then in the case of SQM uh, 2030. Um, Scotia actually says um, this may not be that bad um, because it, it, it may not be that negative for these companies. Scotia says we're being contrarian here. However, Albemarle, they say it's unlikely they'll commit much more capital to the country if they aren't going to be able to earn sufficient returns. I guess I wonder how much of an outlier is this because we've mm -hmm. seen, this. Is, first of all, it's an important metal if you're making electric vehicle batteries yeah. and you think this is the future, but we've seen other countries make moves to kind of oh, yeah. uh, greater benefit yeah. from, from uh, the demand for lithium. Yeah, it's interesting too uh, that the real value in lithium is going to be processing the thing, building battery factories, and of course you and I may be on the hook to pay subsidized Volkswagen for more than $13 billion over many years for building that plant in southwestern uh, Ontario. Yes, that is correct. So it, it's interesting that Chile may tie this to more development of actual lithium processing because with these things that's where a lot of the value is. Um, Australia is now the world's biggest lithium producer but they're a miner, they are a hard rock miner of the stuff but Chile is number two. Okay. So it's a shocking development though that Chile would go this far but we yet to see a, a, exactly how aggressive they're going to be with this thing. I guess and, and, and when it comes to mining we've seen the playbook of public-private partnership yeah. before where the government takes a royalty or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, that's right. And yeah, that's right. And they take a, pro a share of the profits, yeah, perhaps. Yes. And then Chile also yeah. has, for many years, had Codelco, the giant state-controlled copper miner. So this is not new for Chile. They have a role, the people the people of the country actually own a stake in the mineral production directly. All right. And uh, perhaps a smart move, because you're if you actually own the producing asset, you're inside the tent, you know what goes on. Okay, thanks so much, Andrew Brown, for bringing us up to date on the latest moves and some of those lithium stocks.